What's up everybody? So we're back on the shop with another daily vlog and guys, we're working on this one again. So I have not named this knife yet and I thought it might be cool for y'all to actually name the knife. So go down the comment section and drop a name that you think this should be called. I'm gonna end up doing a random comment generator and whosoever comment gets picked, they're the ones that are gonna be naming this knife. So that's what it'll be named from that point forward. Go down there, drop a name. Now, what are we gonna be doing today? We are gonna be doing the bevels on this knife. We are gonna do the heat treat, the temper. We are going to acid etch and stone wash. So we've got a bunch of stuff to do today. We are gonna be doing all those. I'm gonna break down what we're doing and why we're doing it. So let's jump into it, get it done. Well, what we're doing here is going ahead and getting that center line marked up on the center of the edge so that we know where to grind our bevels to. We're just using our calipers to do this, just like I normally do. Got a nice crisp line right there so we know where to grind to. Now we need to go ahead and put our plunge line jig on. I do have a video on how I made this. If y'all wanna check that out, I will leave a link in the description. You can go over there and watch that video if you want to make one of these. Now what we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and go at a little bit of a steeper angle so that we can grind straight to that center line that we marked. Just like that right there. And then we're going to go ahead and feather back from there. Now, if I was doing a Scandi grind, I could actually do a shallower grind just like that. A lot of people do just how you saw right there. A lot of people will go just back to that, and that's it. But they'll use a thinner steel on a 316 steel like this. Where I have it right there might be the shallowest you want to go. Which is about almost halfway up the blade. But we're going to feather this all the way back to a full flat grind. So that bevel is going to go all the way from the edge to the spine of the knife. And I'm wanting to show you these steps right here so you see how I'm feathering it back and how much I go back each time before I go ahead and check and see where I'm at. I want to make sure I don't go too far because if you feather this all the way past the spine, You'll end up with an indention when you're looking straight down the spine from the top up. So we'll just take our time. we we'll put a little bit more pressure on the spine of the knife. As we're holding it flat against the belt, you want to just start rocking it back towards the spine and it will feather that bevel from the edge all the way back. So that's what we're doing here. A little more pressure each time we do it. And it slowly starts pulling it back. And my goal here was to get it almost all the way to the spine. We still have to do a couple of different grits of belts. So you don't want to go all the way to the spine when you're doing this on the 40 grit ceramic belt that I'm working with right now. That's how much I'm leaving on there because the next belts that we do will take the rest of that off. Now it's time to go ahead put the sharpening choil in. And I'm just using a chainsaw file here. These work out pretty well. So we just have that little sharpening choil. And that's so that whenever you're sharpening the knife, you can actually go all the way past the edge of the blade and you make sure your whole entire blade is sharp. So we're doing a 220 grit belt and we're going very light on these. We're not pushing much pressure on the actual blade onto the belt. We're just trying to get any of those deep scratches from the 40 grit out of the bevels. start smoothing it out just like that. So 
and now it's time to go ahead and do the scotch bright belt and get the rest of the little finish on there that we want and I always go all the way up to this medium scotch bright belt before we do the heat treat it just puts the finish on it that I want especially for the type of finish that we're going to do on this And I do have a piece of angle iron in there as a baffle so that the fire is not going directly onto the blade. And right here we are normalizing the steel. I do two sets of that, so I normalize it twice at different temperatures. I'll have a video where I go into that in more detail one of these days. Now it's time to go ahead and quench the blade. I have this oil heated up to 120 degrees. It is peanut oil. It's the oil I tend to like to use. I have good success with this oil and it doesn't smell whenever you plunge a hot blade into it. Now it's time to go ahead and temper the blade. And I, I tempered that for two cycles at 375 degrees. That is the texture that I want. I wanted to leave a little bit of that forge scale on there. So all we're doing right here is we're lightly going over on the medium scotch bright belt just to knock off a lot of the coating from the forge scale. And some of this is decarb and things like that, but we want that texture on there so that whenever we do this step, which is the acid etching, my acid is 50% ferric chloride, 50% distilled water. And I do make sure that it's warmed up a little bit. If it's been cold outside, I do heat this up just a little bit because a warm acid actually etches better. So this is just the first phase. And the, I do two phases of this or two steps of it because the first one eats away the rest of the forge scale and contaminants that are on the blade that I was using to put the pattern into it whenever we did the etching. So once we clean all that stuff off, it looks like this. And then we're going to go ahead and do another 15 minute dip in the acid. So the first one was 15 minutes. This one's going to be 15 minutes as well. And now this one is actually going to make the blade a little bit darker than the first one did. And it really solidifies that the texture that we wanted in there. Now it's time to go ahead and stone wash it. So this just goes straight in here and I've explained what this is in the past. This is just a little fuel oil mixing container for marine equipment, boats and things like that. And I have aquarium rocks in there and then a little bit of WD-40 and we just shake it up. I will eventually make a little tumbler for this but this works for now and it's a good workout. Once we get it all cleaned up, that is what we're left with. Love the texture on this, love the finish. This is one of my favorite finishes to put on knives. It takes a little bit of work, it takes time, but it has a really good end result. At least I think it does. All right guys, well that wraps up today's daily vlog. Let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. I love the finish on this knife. I like doing the finish that way where I leave a little bit of the forge scale on and then do the acid etch, clean everything off, and then do the acid etch again 
and it gives you this after you do the stone wash. It just puts a real cool texture on the blade, nothing too deep or anything like that, but it does add a little bit of uh, resilience to rust because of the texture and the acid edge and everything. Uh, whenever you have those high gloss super mirror finish knives, they tend to rust real easily and patina super fast. This won't do that. So that's the whole point behind this and the way that I do my knives like this, especially for something that's meant to be a tool to use all the time and be abused. So yeah, now let's recap what we did. So what we did was we went ahead, put our bevels on it, then we heat treated it. We went ahead and tempered it and then we did the whole acid etch finish and everything on it. So those are the steps that we did today in today's video. Now what we're going to be doing on the next video is we're going to be taking these micarta handle scales and a lot of y'all have never even seen these. So about a year ago I made my own micarta handle scales. This is part of that first batch that I did. I've been saving these for a knife that I thought was going to look absolutely awesome and something that would make sense to go with them. We're going to use these on this with this kind of burnt orangey uh, vulcanized liner. So we're going to put those together on this knife. That's what's going to be happening in the next episode of this. So stay tuned for that. Guys, if you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or a video that I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And if you have not yet, bottom corner, hit that little subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you get notified when we finish this up. Plus do some more of the stuff that we have going on around here. Thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for giving me the time and, you know, hanging out with me. Y'all have an amazing day. I'll catch y'all next time.